Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. How are you? Wonderful. Good to see you. So good to see you, as you always. Same here. So it comes to an end. Yeah, it does. All good things have to come to an end, and our online test prep is now coming to an end. It's eighteen hours. Apologies for that. My computer does that every half an hour. Uh, so it's it's six p.m. and we have a smaller audience today now that it's coming to an end. So I wanted to wish everybody a good evening and a very warm welcome to Mr. Abhinav Garg from SAT and Paper. It's been a great pleasure having all of you, students, parents, counselors, joining us across the last one month uh, as the SAT and paper team spoke about both the SAT as well as the ACT. We received interesting news at the end of the month that the College Board is discontinuing the SAT subject tests. There will be some modifications into the SAT. And I at least expect that the game will be shifting away from, uh, towards the AP exams now. So a lot of interesting developments happening. There has been a huge outpouring of uh, uh, gratitude, which I'm very humbled by from school counselors, from parents, from the thousands of students who have registered with us across the last one month, thanking us, thanking the SAT and paper team for conducting this online test prep session, multiple sessions on every Sunday so that, that has been a, a, a wonderful feeling right across January. Um, as counselors, we have been so busy in the last few months handling the application work for our grade 12 students. And normally, you know, January would have been a slightly more relaxing time, but uh, I was so excited by everything that was happening. And it was great to see so much action right across the month. A very big thank you also to Team Next Genius for conducting the whole show, for running the entire operations, everything from spreading the word to running this entire operations and supporting the demands of uh, our senior team as well as requests from Abhinav Sar's team. And a very even bigger thank you to Abhinav Sar and his team at SAT and Paper. Yes, <laughs> it's, this uh, idea that I had put forward would not have been possible if you had not come forward and agreed to do this. And there was no better person I knew of in uh, India than you who would have done it. And I thoroughly enjoyed all the sessions. Uh, I it's really our pleasure, sir. This has been, it's been a matter of pride for us to do this. And uh, honestly speaking, huge learning experiences as well. No second thought in that. So I think we should thank the Next Genius Foundation and Dr. Dheeraj Mandana for allowing us to do this on this platform. My Heart pleasure. Gratitude. Absolute, absolute pleasure to host you and conduct this. And I hope we will get more opportunities in the future to do something Certainly. similar. Forward, this, uh, the SATs and the ACTs, you know, they're always changing something or the other. So this is, I know that this is our only our first step and we are going to do more things in the future with the SAT and the ACT. Now, I know that we have scheduled a 40-minute session, but I think we don't have that much to say today. So I think one very important thing, if we can talk about uh, for the audience that we have today is, as you are preparing to take the SAT or the ACT in the upcoming months, now that you have gone through some prep, uh, what are some of the other things that uh, a student should do? How can parents help? What are some things that they should not do? I would love if Abhinav sir could just comment on that briefly. Thank you so much, sir. So, you know, the first thing that you got to do is plan a target test date in mind and work it backwards from there. I see, I see, I think hundreds of students each year approaching us around this time, sir, I want to take the test in March. And we said, no way. You have to look at what the ideal prep time here is. The ideal prep time would be anywhere from three to about five months, right? Of this, the last six to eight weeks should be left exclusively for testing. 
Now, don't jump headlong into the test. That doesn't make any sense. You should use the first six to eight weeks working over the content, going through the textbooks, going through the concepts, making detailed notes wherever required. And the last six to eight weeks, you got to do tests. And the tests must be taken under invigilated conditions. That's extremely important. You know, so if you're doing a mock paper from the official guide uh, of the SAT from the college board, and you are supervising yourself. So what is the fun? All the questions are there, all the answers are there. So I come across, you know, so many students who say, sir, I was scoring 1550 on my mock papers when I did them. That doesn't make sense to me. If, if the mock papers were not invigilated, trust me, they're, they're worthless, right? Get somebody at your home to invigilate those for you so that the test papers and the answer sheets are put separately. You should not have access to them. That's good discipline. Second, the time has to be strictly adhered to. So if I had 65 minutes for a reading section on SAT, and at the end of 65 minutes, you know, I still have got three more questions to be taken care of. So what I normally think is, it's okay, I can extend it by two minutes. I'll rush on the actual test. Please do not do that. Your testing conditions, you know, must simulate the exam date condition. That's extremely important. Take the breaks where they are permitted. Do not take them where they're not permitted. So two, three things only. Number one, plan your prep well. Any good SAT prep would never require more than 10 to 12 hours per week or ACT prep for that matter. So I've seen students treating this more like a school exam prep. It doesn't work. So the first eight weeks, you're doing two hours a week, and then you want to make up for it by spending, you know, some 20 hours a week. That doesn't help here. It has to be, it has to be structured properly. Uh, use professional help wherever you think you need them. Of course, we also offer all those programs. But I mean, if you are a sincere, self-motivated student, you can obviously do it on your own as well. Uh, we have talked about the resources to be used throughout the program, so you know what is to be used here. On the ACT, make sure you do not solve the test paper in pencil or through a PDF. It has to be on a platform. Uh, you'll get a very good idea of the platform. If you go to the ACT website, they've got one practice paper for you there that you can take care of. If you need more, you can always come back to us. Right. Uh, reviewing of your papers, I think, is the most critical thing here. So at any point in time, do not plan to take more than two tests in a week, right? The worst thing that you can do is do two or three tests in the same day without analyzing, right? Which is like, which is like doing a lot of hard work, but not taking the juice out of it. So every time I, I normally recommend you should follow a simple 50% analysis principle. If I've taken a test for three hours, I must spend at least 90 minutes analyzing those papers so as to figure out where you went wrong and what different things you need to do next time. You know, it's like playing a video game. It's as simple as that. We used to play that good old Mario Brothers in our times, you know, and all of a sudden a big ditch comes and the Mario dies. What do you do? You play again, obviously. But when you play again, you momentarily reflect on what went wrong the last time. And number two, you know, doing the same things again would not get the Mario to survive. You'll have to do something different this time. Even that may fail again. That's okay. You've got to be experimental here, right? So a bit of an experimentation and, you know, a bit of an experimentation helps. A bit of, you know, uh, out-of-the-box thinking also helps at times. So look at progressively minimizing your uh, mistakes of omission, which is what we call as silly mistakes. Wherever you think there was a conceptual gap, go back right to your textbooks and cover that gap up. So the last eight weeks is a very exciting journey. You know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a phenomenal learning journey unto itself. Over to you, sir. Excellent. It's uh, you and I have seen so many students go through this process together individually. Yeah. It's very, this practice is such an important part of this, you know, you know, rookie mistakes I see people just take it so casually and they, they don't realize that they'll have to pay for it later, you know. So practice, practice, practice till you succeed. So important. Practice properly. Everybody as Abhinav sir is guiding you. Sir, any comments on managing your heart, your emotions, your mood, your state of mind? One thing, you know, it's about the mind, we work on the content and getting problem solving right. 
how about getting in the frame of mind to solve the problems properly you know so, yeah. especially in the week leading up to the sat if you can comment on that yeah, the so a couple of things number one you got to put your biorhythms correct right i mean you must go to sleep on time if if you are if you are someone who still staying awake doing a whatsapp or a netflix till 3 in the morning then you better not take this test it's not work for you this is more a test of concentration and focus than being a test of content this is the first thing second about managing emotions you know you have to take the test on its own merit i have always told my students if the moment you open the sat booklet and in that booklet you see the gates to a harvard college trust me the gates are going to be shut right so if if you if you make a very big you know august occasion out of it it is not work for you you got to treat this like a video game take it on on merit it's a simple test it's a bloody test nothing more than that aap isko jitna sar pe chadhayenge sar pe baith jayega right and then the cost of mistakes it multiplies the cost of pressure it multiplies you have to take it very casually the actual test i can tell you would be very similar to the mock papers that you've done it's not going to be any different you've got to detach yourselves the more you attach the more eq you bring into it the more it is going to harm you absolutely don't don't play it up as a big day no play it down just just another day in your life uh, you've got to work on it with an algorithm and that algorithm is something that you should have mastered you know through the prep process through the mock papers you see a computer never goes wrong why because a computer does not have feelings it doesn't have emotions it it doesn't have those gray areas it's completely black and white so the idea is see end of the day the sat or the act they are both tests of decision making so you got to make your approach to decision making completely black and white i started solving number question number 1 i could solve it this is step number 2 i could not solve it this is step number 2 maybe i'll leave it maybe i'll resolve it that's where you know that's where even the stress related to decision making multiplies you should be completely binary in your approach and this binary approach has to be mastered during the test taking stage perfect you just reminded me of my tennis coach when i was like 8 years old and he told me don't worry when you are playing a match you should not be thinking the backhand should come automatically absolutely the timing of the backhand how you place your feet where you position yourself the angle you are going to hit it all of that you have to work in your practice and when you are playing the match you just play it you don't think it has yep. to come automatically so I'm you have to think about that shot you don't have to think about the outcome of the match at that moment you have to play for the moment that's extremely important and you know this is so true for all performers i say a, a, an artist who's performing on stage is performing for the sake of itself is not performing for an audience later on the audience would stand up and clap that's completely different and he'll take all balls but at that moment is completely lost in the act so same you should have to be completely lost in the test don't think about what am i going to score what would happen i would go that come come out of all this take it at that moment is just question that you're tackling that has to occupy you in totality so everybody listening please open your ears and listen to this it's of course easier for both of us to say it and harder for you to live but i think we have seen students who get into that flow state into the test they do very well you know if you start thinking about what's going to happen what's going to happen will i do well or not your focus will shift away from doing the test so fantastic feedback sir now on that note i would like to announce an interesting development both abhinav sir and i have been watching closely the announcement from college boards and the reaction from colleges and other counselors from around the world in the last week or so and we have decided that uh, from middle of february onwards till end of march we will be conducting uh, sunday workshops in continuation what with what we have been doing across january on the topic of ap testing advanced placement testing uh, my belief at least and i think abhinav sir agrees with me that the game is going to be shifting towards the aps in the next uh, this year and in the years to come um, so i think for many of you taking multiple aps is going to broadly speaking help you boost your profiles uh, in your college applications so please watch out for that please do attend that 
uh, the amount of love that everybody has displayed for what we have been doing in the last one month. I hope we are able to hold hands together across February and March. So thank you so much for that. Any comments from Abhinav, sir, for, for on that front? Uh, so the APs are more holistic exams, you know, in my opinion. They serve multiple purposes. And I actually welcome this decision from College Board to scrap the subject SATs because subject SATs served a very limited purpose, number one. Subject tests also, you know, do not give you adequate insights into a particular subject at the same time. It's very focused, very targeted. I need to do it just because the university that I want to apply to wants me to do it, right? APs, on the other hand, are extremely holistic, you know. So apart from building your profile, apart from proving your academic competence, number one, you're learning something new. And number two, you can get college credits again. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm bombarded this year, you know, with ninth graders who want to do an APRE. So the APs are here to stay. And I also think that the AP landscape itself is, is going to undergo a transformation. One, for example, I think they'll be available now more often. Let's just wait for some more interesting developments at the college board. But I think time for us to go, go picking the right kind of AP that we want to take. So this is a welcome uh, move, I mean look forward to this event, you know, which will be starting, I think, middle of February. And for each of the APs, you'll be doing a small rejoinder that will help you, you know, with what kind of resources, what is the scope and all those things. Very similar to what we've done uh, over the last six weeks. Fantastic. Now, uh, you know, in, in the last one month, most of the students who have registered have been sort of grade 11, some grade 10, very few grade 12. Um, and ex the smallest piece of the pie was grade nine kids, right? So now very interesting to note from you that this is an even better opportunity for younger kids when we start doing the AP. So uh, for those in the audience, if you're in grade nine, eight, grade nine, eight, nine, ten, I think uh, th this is going to be a great resource for you in the, this year and the years to come. So please do join that. And uh, I, I think uh, the last point from my side, sir, that we could discuss today is the Next Genius Scholarships for the SAT oh, and ATT test prep. If you absolutely. could give us an update on that. So I'm overwhelmed with the kind of response that we received. So I'll tell you, over 130 students have taken these scholarship tests over the two-day period, 30-31. We could not extend it further. We have many requests. Can we do it some other time? Unfortunately, we cannot do that. And for us also, there were learning experiences. There were some technical glitches at the last moment. Fortunately, we could sort it all out. And anybody and everybody who wanted to take the test was able to take it. So uh, it'll take us some time to put those results into place you know, and put the merit lists. So I think we'll be putting up the results uh, out by about 15th of February. And all the scholarship winners would be notified individually by mail with the process as to how they can go on to claim these scholarships. So two of these scholarships are full scholarships and the rest are partial scholarships ranging anywhere from 10% to 75% of the fee, as I'm sure we have outlined in one of the earlier sessions. So we'll go on and, uh, and again, people who applied for the ACT scholarship test are more likely to land a scholarship because that's where we've seen a comparatively lower amount of interest and we'd put up equal scholarships for both SAT and ACT. So just wait until the 15th of February, uh, or maybe 14th, I think we would want you to give you guys some good news on the Valentine's Day. So let's hope that mail hits you uh, somewhere about that time and uh, the scholarships will be valid for one year. I mean, so any scholarship announced this year will have to be consumed within 2021. Excellent. Really looking forward to that. And thank you so much for partnering with us on that. And Thank on that you. note, I would like to thank everybody for joining us today. I call the closing of this SAT ACT online test prep series. It was a wonderful experience for me personally to think about online education. You know, this was an experience for me because we all moved online in our lives in the last one year, even more aggressively than previously. And uh, I hope Abhinav sir and I can sit down together and reflect on it and come up with an even better offering for you in the future. Would be my pleasure, sir. And, and then the thank you. And, and the last thing is we have a session today at 7 p.m. with uh, a few school counselors from across the country. So please do attend that. I think there are going to be some very interesting insights for all of you um, based on their experiences at multiple schools around the country. So. Do join us, sir, for that. I, I look forward to it. And thank you so much for everything. 
Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Thank you so much for all the wonderful messages that you have been sending us on this chat as well. Thank you so much, sir. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. See you Bye. soon. Bye. See you very soon for the AP Festival. Uh, looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, sir.